Hey everyone, so this is going to be kind of a vlog style video. I'm about to take the camera and show you some stuff in the other room. Andrew's still out, which means I'm shooting this myself, hence the vlog style. Uh, so we've got a lot of stuff in front of me here, like uh, nail polish, there's a purpose for that, liquid metal, and a uh, D-lid kit, a couple of other things, CPUs in various states of lidedness. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a long night of trying to get the delitting stuff and liquid metal working properly on the CPUs I'm working on. So we're gonna walk through some of that. Before getting to that, this video is brought to you by Synergy, the software that lets you share a keyboard and mouse between multiple systems. If you have limited desk space and multiple computers to command, Synergy removes the need for separate peripherals or a KVM and works as an over the network software. Use our link below to get 50% off the home or pro version with SSL. Okay, so first of all, I have some footage of the process of delitting. I used Der Bauer's new kit. I think it is called the Delid Dimate X, I believe is the Skylake X version. And uh, shot the process of delitting. Using this to delit is actually trivial. It took me minutes to get it done. Uh, I used this previously at Computex. It's had some revisions. This thing was not present at Computex. And uh, the whole process was easy. We didn't lose any components it went well. What didn't go well was my first attempt at applying liquid metal. So uh, I'm sure some of you have used liquid metal before. We actually haven't used it on something like a CPU service before, nothing like that. So this was new to me. And uh, that meant making some mistakes along the way. Now, fortunately, my mistakes were not that big of a deal and that they were all correctable. Uh, but maybe some of you can learn from this. So. First of all, this thing, this is the Thermal Grizzly stuff that Der Bauer kindly sent to me. And uh, it, it comes out pretty fast. So I got way too much on the die, basically. And then the trouble was figuring out what to do with it. So um, more or less, the process became spreading it around the surface of the die, taking some of that, putting it on the IHS where it should be and ending up with way too much, having spillover, and, uh, and then with the spillover, I had a shorted capacitor. So basically it spilled off of the die, and because this is a Skylake X CPU, it's 7900X we're working with today. There's a reason we're starting with that one, because it is the cheapest CPU that I will be working with. So a $1,000 risk was a substantially lower risk than some of the other stuff I'm looking at doing. But uh, basically we had some spillover. Skylake X has some capacitors and resistors and things on the upper substrate, very close to the die, which is a bit different from KB Lake. And that means uh, if it spills over, which I had too much, way too much liquid metal on there, so it did, it will short stuff. Now, fortunately for me, I only shorted a capacitor. And uh, so I was able to clean it up, basically used some of these black Q-tips that DeBauer sent over and uh, cleaned it up, got it off the capacitor, booted, and it worked. So there's definitely a scare there. It's a big scare for a moment of like, to the point where I pulled up, I opened up Newegg, I looked at the 7900X, I was like, how much do I want to finish this test? Because I'd already done half the testing, three days of work, and I'm looking at it like, man, I'm not gonna make ROI if I just spend $1,000 but I really want to finish the test, so I had to add it to the cart. Uh, after some, some frustration, some cleaning it up, things like that, re came to realize that one of the capacitors did come off of the substrate. Now, fortunately, it's just a capacitor, so uh, it's not a critical component. Everything boots, all the scores are the same in Cinebench, everything validates just fine in gaming and production workloads, all the scores are identical to previously and the overclock is about the same. So I think this may have just been some sort of something that contributed to voltage ripple suppression or, uh, or something like that. And speaking with Der Bauer, he and his team have run into that several times before where you lose a capacitor and generally the CPU always still works afterwards. So ideally you don't lose <laughs> components, but uh, this one wasn't a big deal. So we didn't kill anything critical. That was good. That was, I mean, Basically, you have to understand my process here. So over the period of the night, it was basically starting at like 12 a.m. or somewhere around there, 11 p.m. I delitted the thing. That was, uh, it, was, it was pretty easy. And obviously, 
uh, I was uncertain of how that would go, but I mean, this is, it's really well built and it's, it's pretty hard to screw up. You just, you tighten it down until you get one to two millimeters movement on the IHS. Once you get one to two millimeters movement, referencing the RFID chip, just to kind of get a point of reference of when the IHS moves, you stop, you back it off, and then uh, pull the heat sink straight up. Don't, don't like push it, but pull it straight up and everything's good. Then you proceed with cleaning things. And part of the cleaning process, remove all the tim. And then the other part, so Derbauer had suggested to me to keep it easy, leave the silicone adhesive on the, uh, on the actual substrate rather than just removing it all. And his idea there was to give me a, a guide, a reference point of where the IHS goes back when I'm ready. And uh, so I, I scraped it down to just a small black layer for an outline. But what I, I misunderstood him with was he specifically said, leave it on the substrate. He did not say, leave it on the IHS. So I left it on the IHS as well. And the process here was uh, a lot of things that could have been done better at once, which is why we started with the cheap CPU. So thing number one, too much liquid metal, spilled over, shorted a capacitor, was able to clean that up and fix it. No big deal, fortunately. But it was very scary because uh, you're looking at a $1,000 purchase. The next thing, number two, that could have been improved was once I cleaned up the liquid metal, I put the IHS back on, this time with a lot less liquid metal, but still uh, ultimately too much. And so it looked kind of like a pool of metal that was reflective rather than a thin film, which is what it should have been, and eventually it got towards that direction. Uh, but basically this just, it, it squared out a lot more than I expected. And uh, that meant I didn't really, I wasn't sure how much I needed it, how to get rid of it. So um, yeah, so that was thing number two was, uh, was basically after getting the IHS back on there the second time and getting it to boot this time without the smell of smoke, without the like, oh, it's not posting what happened fear, got it to boot, but the temperatures were 20 Celsius higher. So obviously something went wrong. Spoke to Derbauer, spoke to VSG from Thermal Bench. He's got a great website, you should check it out. Uh, thank you to both of them for the help. And basically after talking with them, finally Derbauer pointed out, like, uh, send me a picture. So I did, and I had too much silicone adhesive around the IHS still. So I went through, removed it all, reapplied it, and booted. And uh, I'll, I'll actually, I'll take you over to the other room and show you the where we stand right now with the thermals. You know, I should start with his, uh, here's a graveyard of, of paper towels from all the thermal paste and liquid metal. I went through so much thermal paste. I, so we have, it's gonna be dark for a second, sorry. We have two of these and almost, one of them is almost completely empty now. And that's thanks to all of the Skylake CPUs being so damn big. So we went through two damn things. Well, not two. We went through almost this entire thermal compound container. Anyway, I've got it all running now and uh, it's finally working. So this is my automated test that I scripted. We are, what is that? 400 seconds left out of like 1400. Pretty far in. Running prime 95.28.5. And uh, it is, in fact, using basically all the CPU. Here's the cool bit. So there's our current numbers. Ignore that max column. That's from something else. Here about the left column. So we're down in the 40s and 50s. And uh, I'll have the full numbers for you in a separate video. So we're going to do like a full thermal and power video. We've promised this for a while now with Skylake X. Now that we have all the parts, it's time to execute and do that. All right, so we're back in the set room. So there's a lot more to do, and I am going to have to uh, run a lot of tests on this delitted, and then compare them to the original test results. So, so far, everything validates the same scores outside of thermal limitation scenarios. We are roughly, very roughly, okay, let me just, very roughly, normally we do charts, right? You all know that. What I showed you was a screen. We don't normally do that, but I'm excited about this process. 
It took me all freaking night to get it right. It should not have. So I'm hoping that this helps some of you who want to do this in the future so you don't go through all of the stupid things I went through, like really just too much liquid metal. Uh, it should be a really thin film, and then it's all good to go smooth sailing from there. So uh, we will have charts. I'm going to do a whole separate video on it. We might start with 7900X and then move laterally from there. And it's, it's looking good so far. So very roughly 15 to 20 Celsius decrease. But uh, don't go running to the hills with that number yet because I've got a lot more to do. Uh, that was with a 1.15 VID, 3.6 gigahertz locked on a 7900X. Neither of those settings are required, but they restrict everything so that we get the same testing when it had Tim on it as we do with liquid metal. You don't want the voltage to be auto controlled, it'll jump all over the place. So, yeah, it's looking good. I'm pretty excited about it. I mean, seriously, like this is a big move for us to finally get somewhere with the Skylake power and thermal stuff. We were waiting for the the current clap got that in so we can finally take measurements at the rails. We've been doing that for maybe a month or two now, probably two months now. And then waiting for one of these, got this in, and then we were waiting on uh, really just the schedule to clear up from Vega. This came in when Vega came in, so it got buried. But yeah, pretty exciting. This will be just in time for some other stuff, so I guess that's it really. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. I know it's informal. I know there's not a lot of data in here, but I'm not trying to present it as a lot of data. It's just like, here was my experience. Uh, a very quick recap, just for anyone who wants to do this. In the final video, I'll talk through the process more, or maybe we'll do a separate video. We might do a separate like DLID tutorial video. It's trivial to use, but uh, it, it's also a very expensive mistake to make if you miss one of those trivial steps. So we might do a video, but either way, just to recap. Uh, this is easy. You put the CPU in there, clamp it down with this thing, and slowly tighten to the point where you'll hear a pop and see very slight movement and just immediately stop, back it out. It's always easier to apply more force later than it is to, uh, to undo the application of excess force. So just stop, uh, pull the CPU out. You basically kind of like rock the IHS and then it should come straight up. Like don't push it, you'll rip, rip caps and resistors and things. So that's easy. Liquid metal, try and use a small dot. When I use this, it just, it way too much came out and um, I just wasn't really positive how much I needed on there. So learn from that. If there is a, an issue with boot and, oh, actually another, so another tip before I get to that. Uh, VSG and Der Bauer both suggested to me using either nail polish or um, basically like a, not a captain tape, but you could use an electrical tape that's rated for like 105 Celsius or something. Um, the nail polish worked well. So you basically put that, coat that on the capacitors and things surrounding the, the die, resistors, capacitors, other SMD parts. And then uh, that will repel the, it'll repel the liquid metal. So it'll keep it out of there. So I learned that a bit later after the first short and it prevented a second short. So that's pretty cool trick to use. Very easy to do, cost a few bucks to get one. So um, that's, that's most of it. From there, uh, you end up with a thin film on both the die and the IHS. That's important. Don't forget the IHS because you will have worse thermals without it. And uh, if it shorts, if, if you can't boot, don't panic. Stop trying to boot. Just turn the thing off. Remove the processor. I know it sucks to redo the thermal paste. Remove it all and uh, look under the hood. If you've had spillage, clean it up very carefully. You can use Q-tips. You can use rubbing alcohol. Uh, you can use nail polish remover. Just make sure it doesn't have too much acetone in it. You can dilute it with water if, you, if you're uncomfortable. And um, try again that should get you there. Uh, you just want to be very careful when you're cleaning the thing not to rip off components. Like if you're trying to scrub with your nail or something else that's kind of uh, harder and won't conform to surfaces, be careful because you can rip off a tiny component. If it's a capacitor, you might very well be okay. You might lose some voltage ripple suppression or might lose something, but probably not performance. 
Uh, if it's something else, not a capacitor, you might be in trouble. So just be really careful. But yeah, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. Uh, kind of different, but we'll have more for you in the near future with this benchmarking. So patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Subscribe for more. I will see you all next time.